Hi guys, this is a quick video on uh, something a little different today. This is about a book. Uh, most of you, I hope, will have heard of the Code Breakers from Napit. It is a general guidance guide. It is notionally the same size as the on-site guide, but that is probably about where the similarities end. Um, this is a, a guide to um, coding observations for electrical installation condition reporting uh, in accordance with the 18th edition of BS7671. has a nice little plastic cover to keep your precious book in a reasonable condition. This one's been about a little bit so it's not too badly damaged I tend to keep it in my bag. If you're not familiar with coding or you want a little bit of additional uh, support, this um, adds a number of different thoughts on how you might like to code something. So if we have a quick scoot through, we do have some other nice little bits and pieces. Index, always handy. Uh, 177 odd pages. So it's reasonable thickness. We compare it to the on-site guide, it's very similar. Uh, it's written by Frankie Beatty, Bertie, sorry, of Napit. Part one, so this is the bit that you may well be most interested in. This looks at coding, how you might code something uh, what the specific regulation might be, the code Des description. It's broken down into areas, so intake equipment, um, microgeneration, earthing and bonding, distribution and com consumer units, what's the red bit, final circuits, distribution and final circuits, that's usually where I dip into if I'm struggling to find something. And this might give you uh, a description, no fly lead to a metal box, metal back box uh, for CP where the back box doesn't have at least one solid lug. Blah de blah de blah. Two regulations there 411.4.2, 411.5.1. Uh, they rate this as a C3. Uh, I note that is also covered in one of the guidance notes. I think that's in um, the earthing and bonding guidance note. Gives you a, an image of that. Um, so we go on through final circuits. That's quite a few in there. Uh, locations containing a bath or shower. Uh, special locations. Um, how to do a risk assessment on the emission of an RCD and this gives you a uh, a template model form this I believe uh, is one that's been suggested by my mate Paul Meenham and uh, if he thinks it's a good idea and uh, a reasonable form then I am in no position to suggest otherwise these are obviously templates you can do anything you want with them to create the, the setup that you need um, something that I particularly like and it's not something I found anywhere else frequency for next inspection now we see frequencies in guidance note 3 specifically around the initial period we don't see anything else on how you're going to plan or suggestions on what risk assessments you might use to direct your next frequency. Now this breaks it down into a number of sections, public rented, um, houses and multiple occupancy, commercial, industrial properties, medical locations, Agricultural buildings, so let's stick with that one. I've seen a bit on agricultural buildings on Instagram just recently. So, 
high, medium and low risk. High risk, some maintenance schedules in place, maybe none. DIY modifications, history of damage and on what farm don't you find a history of damage. Neglection, uh, neglected installations, unsafe modifications, histories of uh, abstraction of electric, uh, electricity bypassing the meters. I've not seen that. Um, I've heard suggestions that it's done. Um, I haven't caught any farmers doing it. Um, medium risk. Regular maintenance schedules in place. Uh, access uh, to site knowledge. A 24-hour technician. DI mod modifications meeting the required standards and, and certified history of damage repaired in a timely manner. Uh, regular maintenance. So this is the low risk bit. For agricultural buildings, regular maintenance schedules in place, access to site knowledge of a 24 hour technician, uh, no, DIY, no DIY modifications, uh, and no history of damage. So we have low three to five years, medium one to three years, high every year. Um, we've also got the suggestion for an intermediate visual inspection of six, one year. And one year farms are a tricky place they're rarely covered by a maintenance schedule um, I did close to 19 years in farms there were no formal maintenance maintenance schedules on any of those they were simply based on a visual inspection on turnaround of of flocks or um, uh, change of use of the buildings we would go in and have a look uh, DIY modifications, maybe. Uh, history of damage, definitely. Either by uh, ingress, physical damage, um, or just simply by the age of it. Uh, I think this gives you a good indication of where you might look. Again, this whole book is guidance for you. You use it, you extract what you need from it, and you use your own risks and method statements to apply uh, these things correctly throughout your buildings. Um, but if you want some pointers, shall we say, on the way, I think this is very good. Uh, PV, caravans, EV, what was that? Multi-storey car parks, public houses, marinas, goes on. Community centres, schools, churches, gymnasiums, swimming pools, leisure centres, motorway service stations. Conference centres, commercial kitchens, um, all sorts. Now, what I didn't see there, and I'm sure it's because I missed it. Uh, residential care homes, private dwellings, that's what I was looking for. Knew it would be there somewhere. Uh, private dwellings, probably where most of the guys in vans will sit. Uh, again, uh, low, medium and high risk, uh, giving a visual inspections. And also we've got the uh, intervals between inspection and testing uh, where it's not covered by a full risk assessment. So again, low risk, regular maintenance, long tenancies, no DIY, no history of damage. Fairly easy, could be a standard domestic installation where people in long term residencies. This of course doesn't include change of occupation or change of uh, change of use which you do it when it happens. Um, medium, regular maintenance, long-term tendencies, DIY modifications, meeting the standards and certi certified, but a history of damage. Uh, these may well have been uh, repaired. High risk, some maintenance, possibly not. Short-term tendencies or not established. DIY modifications, history of damage, history of neglect, history of unsafe modifications, and history of nicking electricity from the meter. Um, you just go in more often, basically. Uh, one to two years on that one, six month visual inspection, or change of, uh, change of occupancy. These are all risk assessed time periods for you, but uh, we need to be thinking about getting away from yeah it's five years mate yeah it's ten years for a domestic uh, those statements tend to be from the designer in guidance note three 
uh, that form in there is your initial inspections. This is not for continued use and, and applying after your EICRs. Uh, have I missed there? So, additional background to how you risk assess your installations. Information for clients, um, dangerous situation reports, uh, distribution equipment, DNOs and meter operators. Uh, quite a nice little drawer in there of who owns what kit on the site. Quite often get asked, well, can I cut the seals on the DNO equipment? Well, looks there as though it's very much not your equipment when you're working over here. Um, there are ways and means of getting around that. Uh, some are legal, some dubious. Um, some perfectly legal if it's done in the right way. Uh, DNO contact details. So we've got all the main um, DNO suppliers listed there. Routine operational visual inspections. Uh, all sorts. Information for inspectors. Asbestos. Maximum and 80% ZS values. Uh, all sorts. ZS values there. Number of different things. Types of um, RCDs. Surge protection. Uh, fire alarms. Emergency lighting. How to test, an, uh, test a circuit with an AFDD in circuit. I don't hear much about AFDDs currently, but they will be all over the place when we start seeing them fitted. Um, we get very little feedback on actually testing them, um, but we might still have to test the, uh, the circuit attached to it. Can we do that? Is that going to cause a problem? So a bit on AFDDs there. What have we got there? Examples of spurs, examples of ring mains. Um, different fault scenarios work there. Uh, surge protection, how to carry out risk, risk assessments on your surge protection. That, um, I think, especially... Those pages for risk assessing, risk assessing the frequencies between your EICRs and coding, especially if you like to include the regulation numbers. And this does get a, give a bit that I briefly went over at the front um, for your intakes. This is all pointing you to the EICRs, not the EICRs, um, ESQCR. Uh, regulations. There are a few here that refer to regulations in the 18th. Uh, there are uh, Macopa um, guidance notes which will also give some of these um, uh, codes that the DNO will recognise and the meter operators use. Uh, so that is my EICR code breaker book. Lovely little tune there going from the washing machine. Thank you very much. But I think this is a, a useful 18, 19 quid's worth of anybody's money. Um, if you're beginning, you've done a short course and you want to learn more, you're on or have finished or recently finished an apprenticeship, you might want to top up on actually what that looks like on site. I think that's a uh, a nice book. Uh, if you don't like it, tough. I do. Thanks very much, and uh, keep safe. Bye.